welcome to Be Smart About Art Show. My name is Susan J. Mumford and I am the founder of Be Smart About Art and also your host for this edition. So I'm delighted to be with you here today for hashtag Be Smart About Art question time. The way that we have set up this program of shows, which runs Sunday to Thursday each week, is that we have different themes for different days. And the Wednesday theme is question time. That's after the BBC question time show that's been running for many, many years. And this is an opportunity for our members who are part of the Patreon program. So patreon.com forward slash be smart about art. So that's where our membership community lives and our members are able to ask questions that I will endeavor to answer as much as possible. Although 15 minutes may not seem like a long time, it's actually amazing how much you can indeed do. And I know that from all my years when I was mentoring and coaching and I would do 20 minute sessions and often point people in the right direction, just literally in those few minutes. So today, um, I've got two questions to answer and they are, one is how on earth do you price a bespoke commission? And the second one is how do you go about pricing, um, or rather how do you go about approaching a gallery? Now the second one, I have received that question probably thousands and thousands of times. And I'll give you a, one perspective on that today to give you some insight. And that's actually useful for people who are galleries as well to hear about exactly what that angle is. So let's tackle the first question. As we do with Be Smart About Art, we're here to help you thrive in a changing art world. And it's really important that we pro provide support for artists, dealers, and others in the industry. In this ever-changing world, I might add as well, right now we're, we're tackling circumstances that we've never had to do as humankind previously. So yeah, ongoing learning is paramount, let's say. So when it comes to doing commissions uh, that could be bespoke or custom commissions that could be the result of a grant opportunity for like a public commission in your community it could be perhaps a corporate art advisor is is seeking a work of art for a specific location it might be that there's a couple looking for work of art to go into their home there are so many different situations in which we see commissions it could also be Perhaps somebody wants a portrait of themselves, maybe of a family member. It could be of, of children. Some artists will not do commissions, portrait commissions of teenagers or kids just as a thing. On the other hand, some people love it and some people won't do dogs and other people absolutely love those commissions. So it's really what is your cup of tea, but how on earth do you go about pricing it? Well, it's one piece of good news that I've got is that pricing a commission is going to get some different uh, profit de depending on what your role is the transaction that reflects your role in the transaction it gets you what you need now if you're an art dealer don't be turned off by what i'm just about to say because i then have some good news for you let's say that in a quite traditional situation that there is an artist working with a gallery and or dealer consultant what have you and this person this consultant dealer gallery type person they line up a commission for the artist and and essentially in this scenario the artist in the gallery let's say they normally work on a 50 50 split so what that means is that the artist is taking 50 percent and the gallery is taking 50 percent i could do a whole session alone on on different types of commissions for different individuals we'll keep it at that for today well in the smart scenario of a commission i would expect the artist to be getting a higher commission than they normally do and the reason for that is because of the additional work that's going to be entailed and, and essentially the time that that is going to take. So consider this, for example, when you normally see works of art on a wall, essentially, or on a, on a plinth, what have you, there you've got your piece, somebody likes it and they go, fantastic, I'll take that, thank you very much. On the other hand, if you, if you go to someone and you say, as, a, as maybe a collector, a patron, and you say, hey, I would really like a commission of my spouse. And so what, what has to be arranged is likely sittings or photography session, and then it would take some time. And it's, there's no guarantee that the client is gonna be happy from the get-go. So it might be that you send some update images and the client goes, you know what? I just don't really like that perspective. Or could we just 
maybe just change the pose a little bit or do this little thing or could we start all start all over all together so all kinds of scenarios like that do happen and therefore the person who is is making the work does need really they're they're justified to get some more money for that commission and that's completely reasonable and that's completely fair so that means that in this situation the artist is getting 70 percent. but then how does the art dealer justify this the time that they're spending when they're doing all the liaising they have done the initial acquisition of, of the client this might have been built over a number of years potentially and they've done all the marketing to the to the collector and now suddenly they're only getting 30 percent. so are they actually getting enough to pay for their time bearing in mind there is going to be some back and forth they've got to do communication i know that in my own experience when i was a gallerist i one time lined up a commission and I actually went to an artist studio on a weekend morning because it turned out that the artist was not making the piece that had been promised to the corporate location. And so I went to the, studio, the artist studio to basically say, listen, I absolutely love what you're doing. And essentially that would be great for another exhibition, for another client. If you would like to go ahead and get paid for the rest of, of, this, of this project for which you've been commissioned, we really need to stick to the theme. And so the artist had to go back to the original subject that had been promised to the client. And in that kind of scenario, that's taken, that's taken that, the, the, the person arranging the whole commission, which in my case was myself as a gallerist, you know, that took a, that took a morning out and it took the travel cost and it took all of that. And it's not what I'd planned to do on a Saturday morning, but that was fine because that was my responsibility. So how does, the, how does that agent type person get enough money? Well, what you can do is have the price of the work of art on the invoice. The collector doesn't need to know that the artist is getting 70% of that. And that what you then do as well on top of that is that you add a project fee and the project fee can help towards your costs as the art dealer who's arranging everything for that commission. So it works extremely well to do that. Now, in terms of artists, if, if artists are going directly to the clients or the clients are coming directly to you to commission you, a very typical thing that I see artists do is they add a 50% price on top of the normal price of the work of art. So if you say normally sell works in a gallery for a thousand of whatever your currency is, pounds, euros, dollars, uh, that you then add an extra 500 to that. So the total is 1500. And in order to maintain the market price of your pieces, what you do is on the invoice, you have a thousand and then you have the commission the, the project fee is 500 and then you add anything else in there it might be framing that you're adding it could be shipping it could be delivery it could be installation all kinds of things maybe the client decides to also buy the study i've personally had that happen and it's been amazing so those are some some basic insights in terms of pricing commissions i'm keeping an eye on the chat room to see if people on facebook to see if people have any questions for me do do so if you have any questions please and then the second question was about approaching galleries right so this is something about which i could talk for days and days and days and days and what i will say today is that there are three points i want to provide you the first one is doing your research so going and finding the right galleries the right fits it was it was amazing when i was an art consultant and gallerist i got approached by many many artists who were clearly not a good fit let's say they did cat paintings there's nothing wrong with doing cat paintings but they would approach me and they were clearly not suitable and yet they would say things like i've researched your gallery and i think that it's a great fit so so really do do your research and and then after that uh, we get to the second point which is actually create a spreadsheet now ah the horror i am not personally somebody who you'd think would necessarily be using loads of spreadsheets or recommending that you do but when it comes to keeping track of galleries or this by the way for galleries who are watching this this can apply to professional partners what i'm telling you as well this could even potentially apply to collectors keep a spreadsheet of why you think somebody say in this this case a gallery is of interest where they're located keep records of the conversations that you've had with them it is phenomenally helpful to have a spreadsheet and then if you do end up having an advisor somebody who you're working with that in, in that sense and on a one-to-one -one basis who's supporting you in your career 
you could even create that as a Google sheet or something, some other kind of shared, shared sheet. And you could work on that together. I have seen this help artists so much. I've also seen it help agents who are supporting artists who are working on getting into galleries or getting into different galleries or adding different galleries. So, so keeping records of those who are interested, I cannot tell you the number of times I've ended up in conversations and I've gone with artists and I've said, Hey, great. Okay. So you are, you're basically um, interested in, in getting represented by a gallery. Who are you interested in? And probably eight times out of 10, they kind of go, Ooh, I'm not quite sure. And so, so create a spreadsheet, get, get yourself thinking about it. And it's the kind of thing that when you start it, you'll find yourself adding to it and just have a way of taking notes as you're walking down the street or when you're in the studio or going about your day, you can go, ah, there's that other gallery or you're in a conversation with somebody and you can, you can make a note of that. It's extremely helpful. And now the third piece of advice for today's purposes, and I can continue working on this in future shows as well if you if we have our members who send me in the right questions is is so we've considered research we've considered the spreadsheet and then what i would suggest on top of that is looking at your bodies of work do you have a cohesive body of work i have had other questions before about should you provide examples from different bodies of work do you send images from just one body of work what do you do well one thing that galleries really want to see is that there is some consistent thought maybe there's some kind of consistent overarching something that brings together your works of art it's not to say you can't do different mediums you by all means can it's not even to say you can you can't do different subjects you absolutely can you can you can do all of that but is there something that brings all of this together so really work on the works of art those are the first things that you want to do because basically that is what enables you to have the foundation that's required to then start interesting galleries and then after that stage then you can actually start working on the approaching of the galleries in the first place so i'll keep answering questions for members in the weeks to come we're running the be smart about art show as i was saying from sunday to thursday of each week and the thursday show which is the next one is our guest speaker edition and the guest speaker edition is this week welcoming winston peters and winston's going to be talking about the art world versus the art business he's going to be bringing with him his experience as a consultant and also an educator he's a colleague out of new york and i'm really really excited about seeing him that will be taking place this thursday at that's going to be at three o'clock eastern or eight o'clock uk and other time zones as applicable do check out the program at patreon.com forward slash be smart about art that's the membership community where you can dive in and take part the theme while we're supporting this community throughout the COVID 19 crisis is keeping it simple and supportive so therefore what we've done is we've taken all of our strands all of our program we've said right the next art biz boot camp is taking place in 2021 we've got right multiple membership tiers that's going to take place later right now come be part of the community we are welcoming artists we are welcoming art dealers and we are going global with us so we're here to support you in this ever and arguably increasing changing art world and i do look forward to seeing you soon if you're ever interested in seeing what else we do do check out be smart about art.com we do have our ongoing one-to-one program as well and the focus at present is indeed the professional community so be sure when we're talking about networks when we're talking about community and we're talking about support that you don't only that you're not only there for other people but that when you need support that you ask for it too so for those be smart about art members who are watching this be sure to make use of our members only facebook group thank you very much as ever i look forward to seeing you in the future and here is to keeping on one step at a time and maintaining your creativity that truly is at the core of everything you do and the arts have an important role to play at this point in time. Bring some smiles to people, pay, people's faces, bring some joy and some beauty. It's really needed right now. So thank you very much for your engagement and I look forward to seeing you again soon. I've been Susan J. Mumford. Ciao for now.